Inky Johnson, do you even think you're going to play at the University of Tennessee? He said, you're 135 pounds. I said, not only am I going to play, I'm going to start. I said, you made a mistake. I said, see, what you don't understand, and this is what most people do. They base judgment off of what they can see. But what they don't understand, the moments that make you who you are, the moments that they can't see. You see, anybody can be on their best behavior when somebody is standing over their shoulder, watching them, seeing if they're going to do what they're supposed to do. But what they're reporting them see, you see, he could see I came from Crim High School. He could see I was 135 pounds. He could see I was 5'9". He could see all of the stats. He could see all of that. But what he never saw was when I was in a park with my mother when I was seven years old. She was sitting at Buick Regal at 1030 at night. What he didn't see was every Saturday morning at 5.30, I was up running two miles to a fire station and two miles back home. What he didn't see was every time I slept on that floor with ropes and wraps with my cousins, I got up every morning, went to school, and never made one excuse. What he didn't see was on Christmas Eve when a cop, when a guy came through me and my cousin's window, he stuck a 9mm and a 45 in both our face and took all of our Christmas gifts, and we had to stand on the curb and our mother told us, y'all just be great. He didn't see that. And those were the moments that made me who I am. And so now his opinion didn't matter. His opinion would never become my reality. It's necessary to know that everybody won't see it, that everybody won't join you, that everybody won't have the vision, that a lot of people like to complain, but they don't want to do anything about their situation, that you are an uncommon breed. You know, you have to know within yourself that I can do this. Even if no one else sees it for me, I must see it for myself. What are you afraid of? What are you scared of? Because we all have fears, don't we? We all have something that's blocking us, that's holding us back. And as we begin to look at life, what we realize is that the reason that most people are not living out their true potential and not doing all of the things that they would really like to do is because of fear. Some people call fear false evidence or expectations appearing real. You got to have the courage. Do you have the courage to act outwardly on what you see inwardly? Or will you die a dreamer? Will you die on the verge and on the edge and in the land of coulda, woulda, and shoulda? Do you have the courage? I'm, I'm going to drop something on you. It takes courage to be successful. It is far easier not to be successful. Misery will always have company. Success breeds contempt. If you don't want to make waves, be mediocre. Be normal and fit in. And if you're more concerned about people than you are God, then neutralize everything he put in you. Just fit in with everybody else. Dress like them, walk like them, act like them, eat like them, go where they go, think like they think, do what they do. And once you neutralize your uniqueness, you don't need courage. It takes courage to be different. It takes courage to go where you've never gone before. For some of you, it took courage to come to this conference. It takes courage to get you outside of the bar. It takes courage to be successful. It takes courage to win. People don't talk about people that don't win. If you win, they're gonna talk about you. Do you have the courage to stand there though the storms keep raging and the people get to talking and you stand there and say, I've come too far to turn around? Do you have the courage? I'm gonna, I'm gonna say something to you. It takes courage to be exceptional. It takes courage to be wise. It takes courage to be rich. It takes courage to be educated. It takes courage to be knowledgeable. Because the moment you do, but you, you don't talk like you, oh, you don't got forgot where you came from. Look at you, talk to, it takes courage. And I'm just wondering, 
in this weak, watered-down, mediocre society that we live in today. In this reality TV world we live in today. I'm wondering if there's anybody left that's got the courage to say after all I've been through, and all my ancestors have been through, and all my parents have been through, I didn't come through all of that just to fit in with normalcy. I have the courage to go after my dream. Is there a woman left in this entire Coliseum that's got some courage? My father was a very abusive, very, very abusive, okay? And I, I'm a big guy. My father is a big man. And I was a kid, my earliest memory of my father was him knocking my mother out, knocking her out. And I, I felt so helpless. It is far easier not to be successful. Misery will always have company. From the time I was four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. muscle to get these men off my mother. My mother's a very high yellow woman and every time they hit her, she would bleed from her eyes. And she would walk around for days with sunglasses on in the house. And I said, Ma, I need a deck of cards. Last altercation we got in, my stepfather hit my mama so hard in the face. My stepfather hit my mama so hard in the face, I called her. And I looked at him with this rage and this pain in my eyes. Like one day, one day. And I took this deck of cards. And I couldn't live in the house, so I had to live in the garage. And after this last altercation we had with this guy, I ran to my garage and I grabbed this deck of cards and I flipped the seven and I started doing seven push-ups. I flipped the six, I did six. I flipped the nine, I did nine. I flipped the two, I did two. I flipped another nine, I did nine. Until I got all the way through the deck. Jack, queen, king, row 10. Jack, um, aces, 25s, and jokers, 50. Until I got sick and tired of what pain felt like in my gut. It didn't even matter to me no more. Because I started shuffling them all over again, and that's when I started doing my sit-ups. Because I wanted to make sure sports wasn't the reason why I started training. It was to make sure man never put his hands on my mama again. That's why I started doing what I started doing. Sports was a byproduct of, of what people started to see. It was the behind the scenes that was driving me crazy desire and will to win is everything. I don't know why I'm like I am, but my butt's always burning. There's always something say, Art, Dad, Gummit, you're supposed to go for it. Art, Dad, Gummit, you're supposed to be somebody. You're supposed to make a difference with your life. What does the $500,000 a year person do? The $50,000 a year person doesn't do. You look at the outside and study those two individuals, everything seems to be the same. They both are the same sex, they both are the same age, they have the same training, the same positions, the same contract, the same fringe benefits. They both are successful, they work hard, they're good family people, make tough commitments. But what's the difference? What does the $500,000 a year person do? The $50,000 a year person doesn't do. 
He pays the price in a little bit more. He works hard in a little bit more. He's loyal to the company in a little bit more. He believes in a little bit more. He makes money in a little bit more. He saves money in a little bit more. If you want to win in these United States, you got to be tough and you can't quit. The last thing I'll talk to you about today in building this winning edge is, folks, if you want to win in business, you got to be a leader. Leadership is everything. You show me anything in these United States that win, I'll show you a leader at work. You show me a successful church, Boy Scout troop, club, football team, business, I'll show you something uh, run by a leader. See, see, I, I thought at one time in my life you had to be smart to win. I used to have these smart people that dress so pretty and talk so pretty and use these big words. They just intimidated me. And I said, Arch, you can't ever be that good. Why don't you just throw in the towel and go on back and coach football for a living? And I found two things out about smart people. I think it's almost impossible for a smart person to win in business in America today. Because I find smart people spend their whole lifetime figuring things out. They're always trying to figure out an easier way and a quicker way. And another thing I found out about smart people is they just don't get around to doing nothing. And see, somebody like Art Williams, everybody said, well, he can't do it. And somebody like that can't do it, but he does it. See, folks, I want you to know almost everybody in America almost does enough to win. They almost get there. They almost are over the hump. They almost have it going. They almost in everything they do almost is a way of life to almost everybody in America. But the winners do it. What do they do? They do whatever it takes to get the job done. They do it and do it and do it and do it and do it until the job gets done. And then they talk about how great it is to be somebody they're proud of. We need leaders in America who can do it. If you want to become somebody, do it. If you want to go in business for yourself, do it. If you want to become financially independent, do it. I hear too much talk in these United States. Everybody can talk a good game. We need people in America who can do it. I go all over this country with A.O. Williams and I have people say, Art, you, you can count on me. Wonderful. Just do it. Art, I guarantee you this is my last stop. I'm going to win now. Super duper. Just do it. Art, if I could just have one good month and get the ball going, I know I could make it big. Super. Just do it. Art, if I could just pay off this debt, I could really go. Great. Just do it. Art, if I could just sell my house. Do it. Uh, but houses ain't selling. Do it anyway. Uh, Art, I'm not making any money. What can I do? Y you just do it. Uh, do what, Art? You do it and do it and do it. Uh, Art, I guarantee I'm going to win this contest. Super duper. Just do it. Uh, Art, I'm over the hump now. Watch my smoke. Great. Just do it. Uh, Art, I want to make it so bad I can taste it. What I do? Uh, you just do it. Uh, Art, I'm a vice president now. Can I quit doing it? No. Uh, Art, I don't know if I can keep on keeping on. I'm really hurting what I do. You just do it. Do what, Art? You do it and do it and do it. Uh, Art, all my life I wanted to be somebody important. Well, what do it then? Uh, Art, I'm going to save money so I don't have to go through this again. Great. Just do it. Uh, Art, I don't feel like I've had enough training. What I do? You just do it. Uh, Art, my manager don't give me no help. What I do? You just do it. Oh, Arch, you don't understand. I was Mr. Everything at my former company. You don't mean I, I have to start off down at the bottom and do it, do you? Yep, you really got to do it. Art, <laughs> Art, what's the primary difference between winners and losers? The, win the winners do it. They do it and do it and do it and do it until the job gets done. And then they talk about how great it is to finally have achieved something unique. And how glad they are that they didn't quit like everybody else. And how wonderful it is to finally be somebody they're proud of and make a difference with their life. Thank you. So I have a challenge for every one of you this weekend. The challenge is simple. Ask yourself, am I practicing self-discipline in my life? Am I doing the things that I should do because I need to do them? Or am I kind of waiting to feel the moment? Do like our friends Nike say, just do it.